From the PEN studios, this is the Imperfect Moms Club with your hosts, Lisa and Brittany. Did you know that being a mom is equal to having over two and a half full-time jobs? On today's show, Lisa and Brittany discuss a recent article about the work moms do. All right. So I was scrolling through Facebook the other day and my sister-in-law shared an article that I really resonated with, and it's all about motherhood. It's from babychick.com. And the title basically says it all. Like you don't even need to read the article. It says studies say motherhood is equivalent to working at two, two and a half full-time jobs. Yep. Like we all knew that. Yeah. (laughs) It's just nice to see it in print. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice to have it like validated. I think I might print this off and like laminate it and hang it on my wall. Yeah, like <laughs> frame it and make sure it's somewhere your husband can like see it every day. Mm. Yeah, and just casually bring it up over dinner. You know, you're sitting there, he's eating his potatoes. Hey, did you know Welch's did a study? It was Welch's grapefruit juice. People, isn't that weird? Because they're <laughs> yeah, a little bit, they're but... trying to come up with how they can help busy moms get better nutrition for their kids, which honestly, when I think good nutrition, I don't think of juice, but whatever. <laughs> so that's yeah. why they did this study. They're like, well, how busy are moms? Like they were curious. And then they were like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. yeah. So, um, I, so, I skimmed through it a little bit, but yeah, just if you could break it down for us. Cause I mean, I, I read it, but not like in detail, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, because you probably didn't have time, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why they put the title there. Like, it's so long because we're just like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. And then we just keep going. We don't have time to read it. So according to the latest study, moms work an average of 98 hours a week. Dang. I know. So that's like working outside the home or not working outside the home, because even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're putting in those 98 hours. So cooking cleaning, driving the kids back and forth, helping out with homework, etc. I'm sure everyone can think of like 10 other things that's not on their list. Mm-hmm. And now you're going to laugh at this, Lisa, because you have a newborn. So they said the average mom shift starts at 6.23 a.m. and ends at 8.31 p.m. But I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was an end point. That would be glorious. <laughs> Yeah, you could like check in. Like it would be by the like nursery. You'd have a little like box and you like punch oh, in your yeah, card. Like, yeah, punch my card in and out. Yeah. I'm I'm punching yeah. out. I can't. I'm done. Baby, <laughs> I don't care if you're hungry. Like <laughs> <laughs> babies don't work like that. Um, so that's generally what they say the shift is. But obviously, if you've got little or ones, it's different. And they say in between all of that time, you have maybe an hour and seven minutes of downtime, but that's not like all at once. That's like five minutes here, maybe 10 minutes there. And then when you put it all together, maybe you get an hour. Mm -hmm. And like, I can't even, honestly, I can't even go to the bathroom by myself. I had to break up a fight while I was in the bathroom. Both (laughs) my kids were on the other side of the door. (laughs) Well, one one came to the bathroom door and she was crying because someone took her toy or whatever the thing was, I'm like, go get your sister. And so they both came to the door and the doorknob started rattling. And I'm like, oh no, I'm at least getting the door shut for this. (laughs) And then I started like negotiating and fixing the problem. (laughs) I'm like, can I just, please, I just need three minutes. That's all I need. Just three minutes. Like, can you imagine if like, I don't know, like, I mean, obviously not like showing you like on the toilet, but like, if you could just, if we could just have video of like, just like you're clearly like in the bathroom and you're just like negotiating with your kids through the door and there's like a (laughs) fight going on on the other side. Like, that's so funny. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and they'll do things very innocent. Like they want to show me the picture they just drew. And I'm like, can you just give me, I just need 10 seconds. I'm almost done. Okay. (laughs) No. And then they they shove it under the door (laughs) and have to be like, oh, wow, it's beautiful. I love your rainbow and goldfish. But I'm like, girl, (laughs) come on. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Just give me a minute. (laughs) Give me a minute. Oh my goodness. So I guess during this study, which must have been conducted by a bunch of men. They're like, wow, how do you do it all? So some of the lifesavers that moms mentioned to get through the day, um, wet wipes, which we've already kind of talked about before. We've talked about 
um, diaper wipes. Like, yep. They don't just clean butts. They don't just clean butts. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> it's a game changer. Um, yoga pants. And I'm going to add a messy bun or a baseball hat in that yeah. same category. Messy bun for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, any kind of, any kind of like loose fitting garment, any kind of like just throw it on thing, you know, motherhood yeah. isn't about looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we look pretty before and we get the guy, you get the ring. Okay. And now the mom emerges. Yeah. Oh, um, bottomless coffee. And it's probably lukewarm. If we're all honest here, it's not hot coffee or, you know, cold. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's cold. I just, I just drink iced coffee now all yeah. the time just because yeah, I'm just like used that's to it easier that's what I should do but like it's it's amazing to me how because that's the saying right the saying is like moms always have to reheat their coffee but it's so true and I wish that it was the kind of stereotype that wasn't true you know but like it's so accurate like I've mm-hmm. had to microwave my coffee so many times like multiple times in one day and I'm like what the hell <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know what it is, but my husband gets to drink his coffee. We're in the same house, in the same room half the time, but he gets to drink all of his hot coffee, and then mine just gets cold. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's see, reliable grandparents, you know, to come and hop in and watch the kids yeah. every now and then. Babysitters, Netflix, snacks. So I was looking through all these things. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. I use, like, all of those. Um, but... You kind of have to like pick and choose your battles when you come to these like lifesavers. So like take wet wipes, for instance. So they're super easy to clean up and like you just throw them in your purse or whatever, but they're probably probably not like super great for the environment. So you have like that trade-off. Yeah. And then yoga pants, which are crazy comfortable, but the ones that I wear, I tend to get like paint all over them and they're like really worn. And then um, if someone like pops in unexpectedly, I'm like, Oh, hey. And I just, I don't like look cute. <laughs> I've had that happen a couple of times and I'm like, oh, just tell her you're painting the bathroom or something. <laughs> just go with it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, bottomless coffee. So it's a great energy boost, but I'm probably not drinking enough water or sleeping enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm definitely not like, I mean, and you know, these are the things, yeah, these are like life-saving things but they're not like the healthiest like I I mean I feel like I definitely don't drink enough water like I've replaced water with like coffee and energy drinks because I just like I need to be able to function (laughs) but like I'm not drinking enough water my body is probably like why woman (laughs) you need to take care of me or so I can take care of you you know (laughs) I don't understand how coffee doesn't count as water though because I'm putting water in my coffee machine so I don't I know there's something sciencey that happens but I'm like but it is water yeah. <laughs> so, um that's what they call it yeah uh so reliable reliable grandparents so that's great for when you like you need a break or like an emergency pops up you could probably almost always call grandparents but the trade-off um could be that Sometimes you can kind of have disagreements about like what you're feeding the kids for dinner or what time you put them to bed or how you discipline, you know, so that can be a little, a little bit tricky to navigate. Like I'm currently on a trip right now. We traveled with my mom to go visit my grandpa. We're trying to help him get his house ready to sell. And there's been a couple of times I've seen an eyebrow raised and I'm like, I know, I know you didn't raise me like this, but I got this and I'm going to try it this way. It's all good. (laughs) So let me me try this. (laughs) Yeah, grandparents can be definitely tricky, you know, because like there are times when you want their advice and there's times where you definitely don't want their advice and they don't seem to know the difference. Like no matter like, you know, what you say or what you do, like it seems like, you know, they're, they got an opinion and they're going to let you have it kind of thing. So yeah, so it's nice to have them so that they can, you know, come take care of your kid if you need to get away. But Sometimes it's uh, so nice to have them a little bit at arm's length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, babysitters. So again, great if you need a date night, um, but they're not free. 
And I have a funny story with this one. And uh, side note, always pay your babysitters well, because if you've got a good babysitter, like you don't want to scare her away because you're cheap, you know, like pay her what she's worth, you know, make her want to come back and work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, So one time my husband and I went out for my birthday. I can't remember. We went out and I had this one girl. I love her so much. I called her. She's super reliable. She's great with the kids. Called her. She came over. She only watched them for like an hour and a half. And I was so tired when I got home and I just grabbed whatever cash was in my wallet. And I thought I was giving her a 20 or something like that. And so I sent, I gave her some cash. I'm like, here you go. Thank you so much. You know, she went home and then her mom, who's my really good friend texted me and she's like, I didn't know babysitters went for that much. I'm like, well, how much did I give her? Did I give her 40? She's like, you gave her a hundred dollars. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she's like, she's not taking that much from you. I'm like, I'll just, you know, cause I was embarrassed. I'm like, just, just, you know, I'll, I'll have her babysit again later. And then she's already paid for that. And she's like, no, so <laughs> she like, she, she like kept her 20 and like gave me some money back. Oh my I was God. Like, I would be so like, what do you do in that situation? I would be so scared to like, I would not, I mean, if it was me, I'd be like, you know what? Yeah. Keep the hundred. Like I pretend like I meant to like, I'd be like, yeah. Oh yeah, I just, I just love you so much and whatever. But then like, I'd go to my husband and be like, Oh shit, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I very rarely even carry cash. I, I just don't. <laughs> so for me to have that much on, on hand, like that was wild. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how much did I hand her? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, so that was crazy. Um, Netflix. Uh, so it's perfect for when you need a minute, but again, it's like, well, how much screen time are they getting? You know, but you gotta be careful with that because you don't want to fall into this rabbit hole of mom guilt. Because if you're like flying solo and you need like to go take a shower or you're just trying to boil water to make mac and cheese, just throw on the Netflix show, you know, just do it. It's fine. So um melon is the worst, but it's I hate also Coco Melon. It's also the best though, because I don't know what happens. Like they like they transfer cocaine through the screen, but my daughter is in a trance when she's watching it. Like she's just completely in a trance. And you know, you're trying to like talk to her and she's just staring at the screen. None of our other shows like are the same. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's like it's like brainwashing or something. I don't know. I don't know what they do, but it definitely like Coco Melon is what I put on when I need to like step away from her for a minute because I know she'll be like standing in the very same position staring. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Coco Melon. Okay. Like, what are you guys doing? Creators of Coco Melon. I see you. Like, what is happening? <laughs> the baby on that show freaks me out. He creeps me out. It doesn't make any sense because so can he talk or is he too little to talk yet? Because when my, when Lily looked like he looks, she couldn't talk. Right. When she just had one tooth, she couldn't even like I mean, barely babble, right? So like there are some songs where he's like singing and he's like talking and then like, but in the beginning he like comes out and he does that like rainbow thing. And then he like babbles and sounds like a baby. So I'm like, I don't understand. Like be consistent. Mm -hmm. This is what we were talking about with the last episode we talked about kids shows, like be consistent because adults are confused or maybe it's just me because I'm crazy. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they have this song and you've probably heard it about making rainbow popsicles and I'm not going to sing it or it's going to get stuck in your head. I have Maybe I should I Oh, you haven't heard it? Oh, well, I hope it never comes on. I <laughs> anyone who's heard it, they're, they're making rainbow popsicles and they keep running back to the fridge to go find a red fruit and a yellow fruit and an orange fruit. And they go through all the colors oh, okay. and they like blend up these fruits and they make rainbow popsicles. But it doesn't make sense because they blend up like bananas for yellow and they'll blend up like blueberries for blue. But when you blend up blueberries, they don't really turn blue. They turn red. It's just Oh, it just messes with me. The colors that they pick and the, and then the foods that go with it. And then yeah, my girl's you, like, we want to make that hard. Like it, I mean, just do your research before you write. I mean, so it doesn't matter. The kids love it. I don't know why I'm getting so, I, I mean, it's because like, I'm, I'm such a, 
I just stay at home mom is like my only persona when I'm like in my house. So like all I have is these kids shows. And so that's all I think about. Like I go to sleep singing Puppy Dog Pals songs in my head and I like wake up and Coco Melon stuck in my head and or Baby Shark or whatever. Like it's just, yeah, just consistency people. Like some moms want, you know, consistency like me. I'm, I'm that mom. <laughs> <laughs> we're already crazy like don't add to it yeah, like we already don't know what's going on you know the least you could do is have a show that we're forced to watch that makes sense you know mm-hmm. so that you know my yes. aching brain doesn't have to ache anymore <laughs> <laughs> we should have our own kids show after this <laughs> um so lastly so snacks which so I'm going to be doing this really big road trip with my kids tomorrow and snacks are a must. Like we made sure we had snacks all the way here and we refilled for snacks all the way back. Snacks are great. And again, like if you need a minute or someone is hangry, like my daughter gets so hangry and I'm like, just eat a cheese stick or something, but then you can fall into the bad eating habits and it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's hit or miss. And like, there's definitely two sides of the coin. But when you're in the thick of it and you just got to choose your poison, just do it in moderation. Yeah, <laughs> just like, I feel like everything about parenting is like a double-edged sword, like everything. Like there isn't anything that doesn't come with its contradiction and doesn't come with its, you know, like everybody is on, I mean, there's two sides still, like literally everything, which is really annoying. Cause like, I just want something to, I just want something to tell me, this is what you do exactly this there's no variations this is everybody agrees but I mean mom life isn't like that (laughs) mom life everything has like a counter to it and whatever and anyway hashtag mom life hashtag thug life (laughs) I love looking at the hashtag mom life on like Instagram and stuff and seeing all the things that pop up because you'll have those moms who try and pretend everything's perfect, you know, and they're standing in like their open concept kitchen and they have their perfect hair and their fake eyelashes on. They're like, life is beautiful. And then you have other ones who are like, their kids throwing a tantrum in the middle of the baking aisle and it's like hashtag mom life. I'm like, yes, there it is. Those are my people. Well, let's take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about how we carve out some me time. The Imperfect Moms Club is brought to you by... That, huh? So they just magically showed up. I mean, literally, I just opened the door and they were there. I ordered them, honey. Oh! We are very happy with our new Casper. The comfort is like a Lucius cloud, one of the softer clouds. But it's also a firm cloud, like a Aratio cloud. Always want to be a weatherman. Guess who I am? It's the most exciting thing that's happened in our bedroom in a long time. A long time. Right? I was on the fence about changing from a manual to an electric toothbrush, but my hygienist said going electric could lead to way cleaner teeth. She said get the one inspired by dentists with the round brush head. Go pro with Oral-B. Oral-B's gentle rounded brush head removes more plaque along the gum line for cleaner teeth and healthier gums. And unlike Sonicare, Oral-B is the first electric toothbrush brand accepted by the ADA for its effectiveness and safety. What an amazing clean. I'll only use an Oral-B. Oral-B. Brush like a pro. This is the Imperfect Moms Club on PEN. Get in touch with the show through the PEN listener hotline at 833-PODS-NET. That's 833-763-7638. All right, well, welcome back. So let's talk about some things that we can do to carve out some me time. So me time, it needs to be something that makes you happy, preferably something like you did before kids, maybe even before you got married. And I just found this out. You have to do it without your significant other, because if you're doing it with your significant other, that's not me time. That's like yeah. couple time, which is important. Like, don't get me wrong. Like date nights, you got to foster that relationship. You have to keep that growing. Um, you know, cause you know, we're, we're in this for life, you know, we got to yeah. get through this together. And if you don't, if you don't feed into that relationship, it's just going to, it's going to, it's going to die. Yeah. But it's just separate- but me time. Yeah, yeah, me time is not date night, Yeah, you know, so, um, so it's time to replenish your cup. And if you're not okay, and you're not doing well, your family's not going to do okay. So it's, it's not selfish to do 
some me time. So a lot of moms on social media are saying that they don't clean during nap time. Have you seen this? No. So the, I don't know if this is new, just coming out on Instagram. A lot of moms are saying this, or if I'm just late to the party, or, uh, but uh, some moms are like, oh yeah, I don't clean during nap time. Cause that's me time. And they'll say, I don't clean during nap time because like I just said, I, I need me time, but also I want my kids to see me cleaning and see that like, I have to yeah. upkeep, you know, and like when you make a mess, you have to pick it up, teaching them responsibility and like including the kids. So I like almost always try to clean during nap time, but now I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't yeah. be doing that. Yeah. Of course, nap time for me is going out the window. My kids yeah. are almost out of it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and nap time for me is out too because you know when Lily's down the little one wants to eat and so I mean yeah nap time for me isn't really that existent right now although some days I get like that magical time where they're both sleeping at the same time and that's like oh that doesn't happen very often but it's like the best it's the best but yeah but I, I like that idea about you know cleaning when the kids are there I mean you know Lily will help me with some chores like she'll do as much as she can do but yeah I've never thought about like showing her me cleaning I usually just clean in the background and then hope she doesn't like get in my way <laughs> but yeah I, I never thought about actually like showing her like hey I'm cleaning now you know I mean sometimes I'll have her like clean up her toys with me but yeah as far as other stuff um but yeah I think I I should start doing that that sounds that sounds great yeah if if my kids would realize how many dishes they create like that would just be so great because like these kids like they'll get a little sip of water but we have to fill the cup all the way okay <laughs> fill it all the way to the top so that it's so full that when they're walking with it it like spills a little bit oh no oh I just I don't wear socks in my house because I hate stepping in puddles and then having wet feet all day and then they take a little sip and then they put it in the sink and like we probably wash all of our cups every single day like yeah. they just go through so many cups so Maybe if I was like, okay, you know what? You're going to load <laughs> the cups. You know, I'll do like the knives and the plates and whatever, but you get to do the cups. Maybe if they started doing that with me, they would realize like, oh, maybe I shouldn't use 10 cups every day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, I, I recently also had my husband help the girls clean their room. Like under their bed is just a black hole <sighs> of socks and sippy cups and half eaten granola bars like it's disgusting and so I said you need to get a broom and scoop <laughs> out everything and then they can see it and they need to see how messy it is and I maybe this is like a bad tactic but I told my girls if they don't keep their room clean like mice are gonna come live in their rooms and they hate that idea <laughs> So I'm like, look at this. There's a half-eaten granola bar. They're going to, the mice are going to love this. Like, they're going to come have a little buffet down here. Yeah. No, like, yeah, you better clean this up. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, and that was kind of good for my husband to see too, because I don't think he always knows how much I'm cleaning every single day. Yeah. So that was good for him to see like how messy it can really get yeah. underneath your bed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I like that idea of, of, I mean, nap time should be a mom break time. I, I like oh, that yeah. a lot. Um, Cause yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I don't know how much your babies would sleep when they would take naps, but Lily sleeps for an hour. And so like, I, I mean, you bet you're about a dollar. I'm not wasting any of that time, but see before, before now, for me, cleaning wasn't wasting that time. Like I like did dishes and stuff, but then I would always feel like angry when all of a sudden it's two and she wakes up. And so I'm like, huh, maybe there's something mm -hmm. to that. Maybe it's because I was wasting part of the her nap time doing dishes. It felt so much shorter, you know, than it would have. Yeah. So I definitely am. Um, I mean, it's easy to like fall into the, oh, I have to clean this right now. Cause I mean, that's like, I get anxiety when things aren't tidy the way I, I like them to be. So like a lot of times, like I have to clean it or else I'm going to be stressed out. So I need to like work on being like, no, Lisa, like this is your time to just, just sit down, just sit down. Don't do anything you don't want to do. 
<laughs> for just mm-hmm. one hour. You don't have to look at the mess. Just like put on those like horse blinders or whatever and just, yeah, just relax. Yeah, I'm really bad at that. Paul's always telling me like, you don't have to do everything every day. And I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I do though. <laughs> and then he's like, but yeah, but then you come at me all stressed and it's, you know, it's your fault. And I'm like, I get this about myself. I know. Like, <laughs> I'm fully aware of how neurotic I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to, to decide. What are you going to do? Are you going to take this time when there's no kids around and you can speed clean the kitchen or are you going to sit down and watch a show or I don't know, Yeah, eat a snack without anyone asking you for it? You know, it's just, it's hard. It's hard, but I, I think I might try that now. Try to not clean at nap time. Yeah. You know, I think I might give that a shot. Yeah. Um. So my me time right now, it's after the kids go to bed mm-hmm. and I stay up way too late for the time that I wake up. Like I know I, I stay up way too late. So like my body is hating me, but my soul is like rejoicing and like, yay, there's just no yeah, kids around. But like, that's the thing. Like I've heard from so many moms that like they stay up way too late and they always hate themselves in the morning. But like, we need, we need that time. Like we need mm-hmm. to get some time back because we have no time during the day. And so like, yeah, we we're fully aware of the fact that we're going to hate the morning and we're going to be so miserable. But for that couple hours like we just have to stay up and just do whatever and just be ourselves you know because we I mean we don't really get time to be ourselves yeah yeah I I even I stay up past when my husband goes to bed like we'll we'll be up we'll watch a show or something together and then he's like oh I'm so tired I'll go to bed I'm like boy you don't know what tired is (laughs) you know but then he goes to bed and I'm like yes (laughs) because then I know I've got like an hour an hour and a half of just me and so normally I will go downstairs and I have my phone and I'll prop it up oh by the way Target had these really cute phone holders that look like miniature TVs so cute yeah you you stick your phone in there and it holds it up and it has like a little tv with like the little bunny ears and everything and like fake knobs and I like had to have it so I put my phone in there and then I turn on some kind of true crime episode and I go downstairs and I'll paint something or I'll just eat make a big bowl of popcorn like I love popcorn so much popcorn is my favorite snack um yeah or or I'll just scroll and now that tiktok is a thing like I can do that forever. Like it's oh, just 15 yeah. seconds. They just, scroll. I get... you just keep scrolling and the videos keep coming. Like they, they don't stop. <laughs> They're so funny. And the algorithm is very good at figuring out what I like and what yeah. I'm going to laugh at. And I'm like, yes, that was funny. Show me more. And I just keep going and going and going. Yeah. yeah I love that. So that's my me time. Um, uh, one tip that I saw was a lot of moms will take a class, like a fitness class or like a pottery class or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the, in like, you have to get out of the house to do it. And then also like, if you're paying for it, it's costing you money. You're more likely to like do the thing. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to waste your 50 bucks or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to take a pottery class. And the one time I was actually going to sign up for it was right when COVID hit. And I was like, darn it, Brittany, (laughs) you missed it. Yeah. um, Yeah. Definitely like doing something like finding a hobby or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, oh yeah, find a hobby, but I, you know, here I am never leaving the house ever. And I, you know, I don't know. Um, So for me, Um, And I kind of wanted to, so this is actually from the article, but um, it kind of relates to what we're talking about now. Um, There's a part, I'll just read it from the article, but um, it says parental burnout is chronic stress and extreme exhaustion that leads caregivers to feel detached from their children and uncertain about their parenting abilities. It can lead to serious issues like parental neglect, harm, and thoughts of escaping. So I actually recently had like the worst just mommy burnout. Like I, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, even though I'm ashamed to even say this, like Lily was more annoying than she was adorable. Like the past few weeks, it was just like, oh my God, this kid, like, you know, like I, and I hated that about myself. And I would, you know, I would shame myself because I was like, man, like, how can I think she's annoying? She's my daughter and I love her so much. But like I did, I was just like, no, I don't want to go into your nursery a million times a day. No, I don't, you know, I I don't want to hold your hand and have you lead me wherever, you know what I mean? And so 
Yeah. Um, and so mom breaks, I mean, there's things you can do in the home, but there's also, there's times where you just need to like get completely out. Like I, you know, I talk about mommy vacations. So I like, you just need to go on a trip by yourself somewhere. Like I've been to, you know, Austin to visit friends a few times. And I recently, you know, I went to a uh, podcast nation 2021 in Nashville, Tennessee, like just by myself. And so like, I mean, you can't always like, I can't afford to do that all the time. Right. And I can't always afford to do that time wise, but when the stars align, it is so nice just to get out of the house for like a significant amount of time. It just refills your cup. It's amazing. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. great. <laughs> so we're going to take one more quick commercial break and when we come back, Lisa is going to talk all about her glorious trip, kid free. <laughs> I can't wait to hear about it. So we'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsors. Imagine a world where potty training is fun, fast, and easy. Only pull-ups have Disney graphics that fade when wet to teach big kids to stay dry. So they're motivated to keep the music going. I'm a big kid now. Chris, come and sensitivity turns your house into us. Nice and cold, but the sensitive teeth thing is getting old. Yeah. Time to say Bye. goodbye to the pain, because having sensitive teeth, teeth is just so lame. Press gum and sensitivity turns your house into ah. Hey! 80% of sensitivity starts at the gum line. Treat it at the source with Crest Gum and Sensitivity. Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. No matter what all the baby experts say, the perfect way to care for your baby is your own way. And that inspired our perfect diaper to be the softest ever with plant-based materials. Huggy Special Delivery. Enjoying this show? Be sure to check out all the shows across the Podcast Entertainment Network, where there's a show for every interest. Visit www.podcastentertainment.com to browse through the full collection of shows. And now, back to the Imperfect Moms Club on the Podcast Entertainment Network. Okay, we're back. So you got to take a kid free trip. And I know like you were supposed to fly and that oh fell God. through. Yeah. So I, so I was, I was supposed to fly. So my original plan, I was like, man, like I'm going to drive because airports are crazy with COVID and all that stuff. So I was like, uh, I'll just drive. But then at the last minute, I was like, why would I drive? It's so far. Like, I'm just going to fly. I get to the um, airport and I go through all of TSA. It was the most useless three hours of my time <laughs> in the entire world. So I get there and I'm at the gate and they cancel my flight. And then I hear that American Airlines has been canceling flights like nobody's business. I don't know what's going on, but like everyone's having issues. So I, all I did at the airport, I had really expensive steak and like three glasses of wine. And then I went home. Like that was it. <laughs> So I finally, I was like, you know what? I'll just drive. So I woke up at like the crack of dawn the next day and I left at 6 a.m. And I just drove to Nashville and it was like a little over 10 hours, but I, it was actually really great. So it was 10 hours in the car by myself. I could listen to podcasts the whole time and I didn't listen to any tantrums. Like nobody was throwing tantrum in my backseat. Like I was just me. And I got to hang out with just myself and like, I haven't hung out with just me in so long. Like, I forgot what it was like, you know, because you, you get into this, you know, you get into this zone where you're just mom and like, that's all you are. And so you kind of forget that you're pretty cool. And so like, I was driving and I was like, man, like, I feel really good right now. Like, I'm, you know what? I'm not that weird. Like, I'm a cool girl. And like, I, you know, I'm just like, yeah, like listening to like podcasts, like true crime stuff and a bunch of stuff that like my husband would be interested in. I loved it. I loved it. I could stop whenever I wanted to. I made stops. Like it was great. Like that was, even though it was a really long drive and I was driving, like that was part of my vacation was just, cause it was like almost an entire day of, you know, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd hate it cause I don't like driving very much, but yeah, I, I really needed some me time. And so it was really, really great. Um, but then of course, as soon as I got there and realized I was by myself, like I got in my hotel room and I was like panicking. Cause I was like, what did I do? Why did I do this like, I'm by myself? <laughs> but, um, yeah, but then like, I quickly, like I met people and I made friends. And so it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I've never really been good at being by myself. 
So like that drive was, it was good for me. I don't know. It was nice. Cause I, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't doing anything. I was driving. Right. So, you know, I wasn't, um, wasn't bored. I was just by myself and I was hanging out and it was really nice. <laughs> you talk to yourself when you're alone. Cause I totally talk to myself. Yes, yes I do. And I'll sing really and then I comment on my singing I'm like oh Brittany that was really bad let's try that again okay okay <laughs> then I'll start singing again the same thing. <laughs> yeah whenever I'm I'm like at school or something and people are like oh we saw you driving at this one intersection I'm like oh what was I doing because I was probably belting out something or talking to myself or having an imaginary argument with myself <laughs> what was I doing <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah and like because I was listening to podcasts listening to true crime podcasts I was like talking it out to myself and like yeah. I'm like oh that's interesting and you know and then you know after I there was like an hour where I was like okay I'll just listen to regular music and I was like jamming like I was having like it was like a, a I was like a one one woman show in the car and it was great um yeah it was it was great I don't know I had no stress like all the stress melted away and I didn't even notice that I was driving after a while because if you listen if you're really into like the podcast you're listening to you just like you forget what you know you're just in it so it makes yeah. makes drives go by faster and quicker and like easier and I don't know it was just it was really nice it was really nice to just yeah just decompress like, I don't know. I felt so relaxed when I got there. I mean, my body was hating me, right? Because I had been like sitting on my butt for 10 hours. But, but my brain was good. My mind was good. Um, so yeah, it was, it was good. It was nice. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And you can eat whatever you want and you can yeah. stop whenever you want. And if you, you don't want to stop, you don't have to stop. Nobody's, yeah. you know, nobody has to pee. Like nobody's like, oh, I want to eat this. Like, nope, you can just I had McDonald's on the way there and I wasn't even ashamed about it. I was like, you mm-hmm. know what? I'm just going to drive through this McDonald's and have a hamburger and some large fries because those mm-hmm. fries are delicious. <laughs> they are. Like, I know they're probably not good for you, but mm, they are so good. They are they so like good. Make, they put crack on them. Like, I'm pretty sure. Like, I think that's the secret sauce is like just cooking. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's in all their like oils that they fry yeah. them in. Or- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm also on a road trip, but I have my kids with me and I have just found out that my daughter has a terrible gag reflex. I texted Mm -hmm. you about this, right? Yes. Okay. So (laughs) I have a pretty good gag reflex because I've been working in childcare for a long time and I have smelled a lot of smells and (laughs) I have dealt with a lot of bodily fluids, but apparently my three-year-old can't handle anything. So (laughs) we had to stop at a potty. Um, because it's an 18 hour drive and it's a gas station and we get there and she smelled something that she did not like and she immediately gagged and threw up in the bathroom and I'm like "Ah, okay (laughs) because I have my other one with me too I I got both my kids so I'm trying to go potty and (laughs) and like make sure that all my kids are like not licking the doorknob or something (laughs) and so she throws up and I'm like great so I take care of that clean it up I'm like you know what we've been in the car a while it could just be because you know, just, just, she's been in the car. That's why. And then we got to a restaurant. We got to my great, my grandpa, their great grandpa, and he wanted to take us out to eat. So we're like, great. So we go to this restaurant. I finally got her to eat like a decent meal. That wasn't just car snacks. And I'm like, all right, let's run potty real quick before we go back to the house. And she's like, okay. So everyone at the restaurant thought she was so cute. Like we're in old people town right now. It's all these old people. And they're like, oh my goodness, he's so cute. Like how old is she? So raving reviews about her we go to the bathroom she smelled something she didn't like I'm like okay it's fine let's just leave we'll go potty at home I take her out into the restaurant entryway where she proceeds to throw up like three rounds oh no and so everyone in the restaurant is like gross so she's like, yes yeah it was it was pretty gross and so she got it all over her hands and I'm like well let me just run you back to the bathroom just to rinse them off just real quick just water just she's screaming bloody murder at me I'm like I just want to rinse the chunks off of your hands that's all I wanted to anyway so we we figured out it's it's a gag reflex it's a gag reflex but yeah I was mad because she had just eaten like a real meal and she threw it up and I was like really really come on on." so (laughs) but we're almost done and the next weekend I get to travel just me and my husband we're going to a wedding I'm so excited no kids (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) 
like and it's so so the thing about mom vacations is like it's it's nice and we can like honestly say like this is amazing but then there's the mom guilt side of it so like you know before I left so um I didn't realize that Lily would understand what was happening right when I left I didn't know that she'd know that I'm leaving on a trip without her and whatever as soon as I so we're this was before I knew that the airport was going to fail me, but um, we're, we're about to leave for the airport and Lily gives me a hug and she goes, don't go trip mama. <gasps> and I was like, you weren't supposed to understand. And like, so she like, she's like death grip on my, around my neck. And I like, I need to like, I have to peel her off of me. And like, I had no idea. Cause she hadn't before that second she hadn't like let me know that she was gonna like miss me or like she didn't want me to leave or whatever and then immediately like right before I left she was like no don't go on this trip and I my I was brokenhearted my my heart was shattered and then I immediately regretted it and I was like Paul like this is a bad idea like what am I doing leaving my kids like I'm a bad mom like whatever and he was like no no this is good for you you need this you know but it's it's really it's really easy to feel guilty about that and it's hard for me, but like, I know that, I know that mom breaks are super important and, you know, you, you need to take them. You need to take that time for yourself or else you're just going to go nuts. You're just going to go nuts, you know? And so, um, yeah, we need to be able to talk about it too. Like that, you know, this whole, this whole not talking about uncomfortable things because they're uncomfortable. Like, no, let's, let's talk about it. Sometimes we need to escape our kids. And it's fine. It's okay. It's healthy. You know, it actually, it makes us better parents because we come back and we, our cups are full, you know, like I came back and I was able to, my, I was refreshed and my cup was, was refilled and I was able to just be with her and hang out with her and whatever. Cause I missed her, right? Like I immediately missed Lily as soon as I got there, but I knew that I needed to be there by myself without her and then come back and then be like, okay, let's do this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder and it definitely does because yeah. like then the kids, you know, depending on their age, they realize, Oh, mom's the one who always does this. Like, Oh, you know, dad can't make oatmeal the way mom can <laughs> or whatever the thing is. And then, you know, your husband does too. Like we came on this trip and my husband had to stay home and I kept asking him like, are you sure? Like I can leave for like a week. Like, are you going to be okay? Because like, you can't even find the milk when it's in the refrigerator. Like, are you going to be okay? And, like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. I'm going to, like, grill every day. And I'm going to, like, he's building a rock wall. And he's so proud of it. And, and it, it looks great. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to go build my wall. I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. You do your thing. But he, like, really misses me. And I really miss him, too. And it's just kind of nice to be like, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, you had to clean the kitchen? Mm, how was that? <laughs> you yeah. know? And he'll send me pictures. Because he's like, look, I cleaned the kitchen really good. Look, I made the bed. Look, I cleaned this. <laughs> and I'm like yes because now he gets it he knows what all I do well I mean like he doesn't have the kids there so I guess he doesn't have all of it but he gets it like and then all my weird quirky things that normally drive him crazy he like misses that now he's like yeah. oh man like there's no one weird and no, <laughs> nobody here who's being Aww. weird or like annoying me like I kind of miss that it's too quiet around here <laughs> yeah I am um, my, you know, my, my husband told me like, yeah, I was, you know, it was really tough with, with the kids and whatever. And I, in my head, I was like, oh yeah, it was hard. Huh, <laughs> that's weird. Like I have such an easy time all the time. Like, oh my God, I love being a mom. Right. It's just, you know, and it, this again, just to tie it into like the whole point of this episode is ties into like being a mom is several full-time jobs all at the same time right like I you know my my husband works full-time as a software engineer and he helps sometimes in the evening with the kids but we have we work the same amount like it's not like you know like yeah he has a full-time job and then he's also a dad but like I work full-time jobs but it's I don't know for me it's kind of weird because like you so you were talking about like the hours equivalency and stuff but you don't think about it like that like I mean there's there are some days where I I literally feel like I haven't done anything all day, even though I've done everything all day because I've been like a mom all day. But like with a regular job, you can clock in hours and you can like see what you're doing and you actually have like tasks, like work tasks. I don't know why it's difficult for me to like 
make it I don't know it's it's hard for me to like realize sometimes like I'm like huh I did do a lot of stuff today you know like sometimes in the evenings I'll sit down and for the first time in like hours and be like huh I did a lot of things today and like you don't realize it you know yeah Yeah, (laughs) I I love you know it's easy to kind of understand that some people might not get it you know because sometimes I don't get it but I mean yeah we do a lot yeah I love making lists in the morning if I have time um I write down all the things I need to do and I check it off you know and I put it down everything like laundry load the dishwasher unload the dishwasher fold the laundry put the laundry away you know mm-hmm. all of the things call and make a doctor appointment all of it and then just like check 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 check. I love that because then I can like visually see like okay you are getting stuff done even if you feel like you're getting interrupted every five minutes you are getting stuff done yeah um and then this is so weird but I will randomly set my phone up and do a time lapse of myself cleaning a room (laughs) it is so satisfying like you can get free apps put your phone in a corner and hit time lapse okay and like fold a giant pile of laundry or just clean your kitchen and then when you're done you obviously hit the stop button and you watch it and it always takes like 10 seconds on the time lapse Mm-hmm. but it just feels so good to watch yourself clean an entire space and then you can send it to your husband and like look at this I did this it was so gross and disgusting and now it's spotless look at it <laughs> yeah maybe that's what I need to do is I need to start making like lists so that I can like see what I'm doing because I do things so quickly and like your brain's going in so many different directions that yeah maybe maybe that'll make it easier for me to I don't know because I feel like it it'll be good for me as far as you know because there are those days where I like shame myself because I'm like man like I really didn't do so well at being a mom today but like if I had a list I could be like oh no like I mm-hmm. I did the thing today like I I do it every day I just didn't feel as happy about it today but like that's different like I still did just as much things yeah yeah it, it could even just be like a whiteboard that sticks on the fridge or just a a piece of paper that you know you're going to do that stuff every day like every day you're going to feed your kids every day you're going to load up the dishwasher at least once yeah. I load mine up like three or four times a day yeah me too <laughs> oh, I, I, how do we go through so many dishes but um but yeah it just it just feels good to see all the stuff that you accomplished yeah you know? it just feels good yeah for sure um so you mentioned that you had a question for the listeners yes so like I said we have a phone number you can call now and we have an email address if you don't want to talk on the phone I know that all of us millennials hate talking on the phone (laughs) um so my question for this week is do you clean during nap time why or why not so is that you time is that clean the house time like what do you do let us know so you can email us at imperfect at podcastentertainment.com. Um, and you can also uh, comment on our social media or whatever. Um, we should, yeah, we should put those questions up there. Um, yeah. That's what I had. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Want to get in touch with the show? Email us at imperfect at podcastentertainment.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Imperfect Moms Club.